So number one is, you know, because dating is a choice, therefore rejection is unavoidable, right? I mean, unless you strike lucky and the first person, you know, it happens, you know, because, you know, God does not dictate all these things. You know, it could happen that the first woman that you approach is the woman that, you know, that's the only woman you've dated, that's the only man that she's dated, and it works out and you get married and it's the textbook Hollywood story. Now, that generally, that does not happen. You know, I'd say the majority of the time that does not happen. The majority of the time you might approach several ladies, you may date several ladies, and some of them don't work out. Either you do not want to marry this lady, or she does not want to marry you. But inevitably, rejection is going to, you, you have to realize that rejection is unavoidable. So tip number one is if you know rejection happens, and you know rejection is unavoidable, then, then, then just accept it. Accept that it's going to happen, and rather than try to avoid it, learn to deal with it. So accept that it happens. I think that's the first, first tip. Because if you think you're going to find this woman without rejection, then you're dreaming. You know, you're, 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 that just doesn't happen. You know, like um, it might happen in, in the minority of instances, but for most of us that know, you know, the person that we ended up marrying was probably not the first person we ever approached and, and, and ever tried to marry. Um, so just accept it and learn to deal with it. Uh, let's look here, Proverbs 24, verse 16. <coughs> look, and it even happens to the best of us. Proverbs 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So it's no different. You know, I mean, if you, you, know, you want to go for a job, you know that you're not just going to get always the first job that you go for. There's going to be rejection. So you need to learn how to deal with it because if you just go for that job just expecting, hey, the job I go for is going to be the one that I'm going to get, you're going to be disappointed when they don't hire you. Um, it's the same with finding a wife. So how, what, what is a good way to, to, to get over uh, rejection? Uh, let's go to Romans 8. I just want to show you this principle here in Romans 8. It says here in verse uh, 13, let me just scroll down there. And this is the principle I sort of use when, it, when, I, t when I think about trying to overcome a difficulty. Um, the Bible says here that uh, in verse 13, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Now, I think the principle that we're seeing here is, is how do we as Christians walk or cease to walk in the flesh? We don't do that by just like saying, you know, I'm not going to walk in the flesh. I'm not going to walk in the flesh. You know, my flesh wants to do this and I'm just going to have this willpower to get over it and not do it anymore. No, the Bible says here that the way we mortify the deeds of the body is through the spirit. So I think that's how we should handle rejection, right? We handle rejection by replacing it with something else. So that's how we deal with the flesh. You know, we have this temptation to sin. We have this temptation to walk in the flesh. How do we overcome it? We overcome it by walking in the spirit. We replace what we would otherwise do in the flesh with something in the spirit. You know, if you're wasting time, for example, on Sundays, what can you do to replace that? Well, you can replace that by going soul winning. You know, you have something that you're doing that's questionable on Sunday. How do you get over that? You don't just go home and say, you know, I'm not going to do this. And then, you know, chances are you will go and do it. Well, why don't you replace it with something else? Replace it with fellowship with God's people. Replace it with soul winning. Replace it with something else so that you don't, do not have that temptation. And I think it's the same with rejection. This principle that if you want to handle rejection, overcome it by starting over. Overcome it by finding somebody else, you know, and, and, and um, starting over again. You know, it's the same with pornography. You know, I just want to touch on pornography. You know, you know, nowadays it's so easy to access pornography. You know, if anyone here is watching pornography, obviously it's a sin and it's shameful and that's why you keep it a secret. But at the same time, you know, I'm compassionate in the sense that, you know, probably every guy has watched pornography. Vic, you ask Victor, you know, Victor, have you watched pornography? Yes, I have watched pornography. I'm not perfect, you know, but that doesn't make it okay. You know, it's, it's wrong. I just have compassion. I understand that, you know, this is what guys do. And, and because it's so easy to access, many guys do it. Now, how do you overcome pornography? Do you overcome pornography by sitting at home in front of your computer and just thinking, I'm not going to go to that website. I'm not going to watch this video and reading books about pornography and the struggles that people have, which is almost a pornographic book in and of itself. You know what I mean? You're reading about all these struggles and all these dark thoughts that people have and you're like, yeah, those are the thoughts that I have. 
That's not how you overcome pornography. The way you overcome pornography is you replace it with something else. This is why God has marriage. God has marriage because that's how you overcome the lust of the flesh. That's how you overcome pornography. And wives, you need to understand this, that this is what God has put in place. So don't deny your husband physical intimacy when he's in the mood, right? Because that, that's what you're there to do. You know, you're there to do it so that he, you satisfy that appetite so that he doesn't go and watch pornography, that he doesn't flirt with the girls at work because that appetite is satisfied with you and therefore you can help your marriage in that instant. So it's the same with pornography. How do you overcome pornography? Well, you don't overcome it by dwelling on it. You overcome it by replacing it. How do you overcome fornication? Well, you overcome fornication by getting married. So if you and your not married partner you know, your girlfriend or your fiance are struggling, you overcome that by getting married. You replace it with something that is lawful and godly. So that's how, number one, that's how, how you can overcome rejection. Replace it with something else. Go find, go, go find somebody else, right? And once you find somebody else, it probably won't even matter to you that um, you were rejected before. Um, and, and that's just another, another point on this point of overcoming rejection uh, um, you know it's never pleasant to fall right it's never pleasant to be rejected it's never never pleasant to uh, you know be be rejected so you know for those of us who are friends of people that get rejected you know be compassionate on them you know like if somebody gets rejected don't make fun of them and you know share their story with everybody else I mean, this is not the godly thing to do. So, you know, it's already bad enough um, to get rejected. It's not something we should be making fun of. This is Because this is an issue that's very close to the heart. You know, issues that are closer to the heart, the more you make fun of it, the, the easier it is to hurt somebody, right? And we shouldn't be trying to hurt our brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't kick people while they're down. Um, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 here, it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So this is how we should be, right? We should be trying to lift up our brother. Hey, if, if somebody has failed in a relationship, you don't make fun of them and kick them while they're down. Help them get back on their feet. Encourage them to go and seek something else to overcome that and then uh, you'll be a help to them. <clears throat> and it's the same with girls. Like if a girl, you know, if a guy approaches you and it doesn't work out and you talk to them and he reveals intimate things to you, if that doesn't work out, don't go and tell your buddies all those secrets and all those things. You know, the Bible says that a faithful person uh, will not reveal secrets, but a talebearer does that. 